This section deals with the concept of center of mass and system of particles. Okay, so it's a little deviation of what we've done in the past, but we're going to relate it to what we've done with momentum in this chapter and Newton's second law from previous chapters, and also energy eventually. Okay, so they talk about a system of particles. So let's say I have a, a meter stick here, okay, and we want to find what's called the center of mass. So what I did is, is I showed, um, here's the meter stick. So for all practical purposes, think of the center of mass is where you would put your finger to balance it, okay? Now, obviously, if you're out in space, okay, you can put your finger anywhere because everything is weightless, okay? Um, that, that would be talking about a center of gravity, which we'll do in the torque chapter. But for, for practical purposes, just think of where you would put your finger to balance this thing. And so I'm going to use this, sing, this symbol to represent, that's the location of the center of mass. So it's a geometric point. So what we want to do is we want to show that a body or a system of particles okay, move as if two things are occurring. Okay? We want to show that, uh, let's say the meter stick, Okay, acts as if the mass was concentrated at one geometric point in space. That geometric point is called the center of mass. And the reason it's called a geometric point is the center of mass doesn't necessarily have to be on the object. Okay, like for example, okay, let's say I had something like this. Okay, um, put one of those. Okay, like a donut. Okay, center of mass okay, is in the middle. Okay, it's not even on the object. Down here, I have a boomerang, okay? Center of mass isn't even on the object, okay? So it's a geometric point, all right? So we want to show that a body or a system of particles move as if two things, that all the mass is concentrated at that one point called the center of mass, and that the body acts as if the net external force was applied at that point, okay? Now, what I mean by that is, is let's say I have a meter stick up here, Okay, and you're, let's say you balance the meter stick um, on your finger. And let's say the meter stick has a mass of 100 grams. Okay, so there's your finger. Okay, you're balancing it on the meter, or you're balancing the meter stick on your finger, and the meter stick has a mass of 100 grams. Well, what if instead you just had one of those 100 gram masses from our lab? Okay, and it was dark and your eyes were closed. All right, you couldn't tell whether you had the meter stick at the tip of your finger or that little uh, round cylindrical mass on the tip of your finger. Okay, why? Because they have the same mass. All right, so we want to show that when your finger is balancing that, okay, that the net external force, okay, so here you have mg, here you have mg. Okay. The, net, the net force seems to be acting at that geometric point called the center of mass. Right? Okay, now, they talk about a system of particles. Well, let's say I have an object like this. How many particles make up this system? Okay. Right? If I took this whole baseball apart okay, and I counted how many particles, how many particles would there be? Well, from chemistry class, right, it's on the order of 10 to the 23rd, right? Avogadro's number of particles. All right. So instead of having to draw for our meter stick, there's an mg for that little particle, an mg for that little particle. Okay. Instead of drawing 10 to the 23rd little mgs up here, okay, this stick acts as if there's one mg that acts at the center of mass. So that's the motivation for looking at the center of mass of a system of particles. Okay, so let's say um, I have two particles. These could be like, like a, two tennis balls or something, okay? And this is the road. Just think of this as the road. Okay, so the road is my x-axis. And this is my uh, origin, okay? This is x equals zero. And one is at the two-foot mark and one is at the four-foot mark, okay? I'm using feet because I didn't want to use m for mass and m for meters, okay? So I have a tennis ball at the two-feet mark, tennis ball at the four foot mark. Okay. So if I want to find the coordinate of the center of mass, this is the location of the center of mass. Okay. How I do that is I go out to the location of each one. Okay. X one is the coordinate. 
okay, of number one, okay, and I multiply it by the mass of number one. And then I go to the, the coordinate, the location of mass number two, and I multiply by the mass of number two, okay? But that would give me mass times a distance, and I'm looking for a location, okay? So I divide by the sum of the masses. And so I have mass units on the top, mass units on the bottom. So the mass units would cancel, and that would give me units of distance, okay? So we haven't derived this, okay? Haven't derived that. Okay, we'll do that when we get to the chapter on torque. Right, so we're gonna we're just gonna see if it works in a special case for let's say I have the two tennis balls. Okay, so what this is, okay, this position of the center of mass, this gives us the average position of the particles, weighted by their mass. Okay, and I'm using the word weight like like a statistical weight. It's a weighted average. All right, so it would make sense that if this was my m1 and that was my m2, that the center of mass would be much closer to number two, okay? And what I mean by that is, imagine if you had a stick between these two, okay? And you wanted to balance these two on your finger, okay? Your finger would probably be more over here toward the big one, okay? Kind of like a dumbbell with a big weight on one side and a small weight on the other side, okay? So, um, this would give us the average position of the particles weighted by their mass. And, I, um, and there might be a homework problem or not, um, where let's say this is, um, this is the moon. Okay, as an example, that's the Earth. Okay, and you can actually calculate the center of mass of the moon-Earth system. And actually the center of mass of the moon-Earth system, okay, if you could connect the moon and the Earth by a bar and put your finger there and balance it, Okay, it's actually somewhere over there, somewhere in the Earth. Okay, so in that case, the center mass of the system is is within m two. Okay, so back to the tennis ball problems. All right, so this gives us um, our average position. Okay, again, I didn't derive it; we just threw it out there. But to see if it works, let's see if it gives us our expected answer, where the masses up here are the same. All right, because if the masses are the same, then the center mass should be in the middle, All right? And let's see that. So if masses are the same, okay, I'm going to use this expression here, okay? So I go out to the coordinate of number one, which is at two feet, multiply by its mass, and then I go to the coordinate of number two, that's four feet, okay? Multiply by its mass, and then I divide by the total mass, m plus m. All right. So on the numerator, I have m2 feet, right? So you can see why I'm not using m for mass and m for meters. So I have m2 feet plus m4 feet gives me m6 feet. And the bottom, I have m plus m, which is 2m. So the m cancels out, okay? M is mass. The m, the m cancels out, and I get 3 feet, okay? And that's what you expect, All right? So if these two tennis balls are the same mass, then the center of mass should be between them. Meaning if you connected these two with a stick, okay, you could put your finger right there and you can balance them, all right? So just think for now as, as a, the location of where you could balance these, all right? So again, we didn't derive this expression. We just um, tested it to see if it gives us the expected result in the limit where we have two masses and the masses are the same, okay? Okay, so we just <clears throat> we just had this. That was for two masses. Okay, now we're going to do it for three, four, and n masses. So we just did that. Okay, now I'm going to extend it to three of them, four of them, and out to n. So essentially, if I want to find the x-coordinate center mass, I go to the coordinate of each object, multiply by the mass of that object. Go to the next coordinate. Uh, next object, its coordinate, okay, but I have to multiply by the mass, okay, and then I divide by the sum of the masses, so that gives me my weighted average, okay. So I can write the numerator like that, and I can write the denominator like that, and since everyone is in Calc 2 or above, in the middle of Calc 2, you've definitely done the series notation, okay. So this is a compact way to write the x coordinate, the center of mass, right, and you can see, whoa, right, that Unit-wise, that would have kilograms 
and those kilograms would cancel and you're left with units of meters, okay? So dimensionally, it's okay. All right, and then if we had a two-dimensional problem instead of the tennis balls like this, maybe one was up here, one was down there, and you want to find the Y chord in the center of mass, it looks the exact same as that, okay? Now you're doing the Y coordinate. And you can also generalize it into the Z, the Z chord in the center of mass. It'll look the exact same. Okay, now, this picture is, let's say I have a system of particles, okay, instead of just the tennis balls on the road, okay, these are birds, okay, and they're flying across the XY plane. I could have done this in three dimensions, but I just, just picture is better and easier to draw in two dimensions. So this bird's moving, uh, bird number two is moving, okay, and this is the third, fourth, or fifth, this is the nth bird, all right, and then what I did is I just drew R1 is the position vector out to the first bird. So R1 is X1 I hat plus Y1 J hat. So let's say this coordinate here is X1 comma Y1. Okay. And then R2 would be, this R2 would be X2 I hat, Y2 J hat, and so on. Okay. And same for that thing. That'd be my nth bird. So as these things fly through the air, just like my two tennis balls, I had a center of mass here. As these two objects move, I have a center of mass of my system right there, and that center of mass moves with the whole flock. Okay. So if I want to calculate the position of the center of mass, okay, that's this vector, okay, the position vector of the center of mass, all right. I do, whoops, I do the position of the center of mass, this coordinate here is x center of mass i hat plus y center of mass j hat. Okay, that's this place right there. So how do I find the x coord the x coord in the center of mass? That's that. How do I find the y coord in the center of mass? That's that. Okay, we did that right there. X coordinate center mass, Y coordinate center mass. So I just put that in for there, and I put that one in for there. Okay, now over here, what did I do? I factored out like terms. I took out the denominator, is common to both. Okay, I took out that, which is common to both. Factored out M sub I, which is common to both. And then what I don't have, which I um, left over after factoring, is I have that term I hat and that term J hat. Okay. But x sub i, y sub i, okay, that would be like x3 i hat plus y3 j hat, okay, that would be r3. So x sub i, i hat, y sub i, j hat, that's r sub i. So this thing in the parentheses, that's the position vector of not the third bird or the fourth bird, but the ith bird. So that's what I put this parenthesis. Went right there. Right. So previously we had we did one dimension. We had this form. Okay. So this is the coordinate of the center of mass. Whoops. Let's say if you're in x, y, and z, if you're in three dimensions, that gives you the coordinate of the center of mass for x, y, and z. So it has the exact same form. So for one dimension, you go out to um, the, part, the particle's coordinate multiplied by the mass, and you add those up. Here, the same idea. You're going out to the particle's coordinate, adding up the mass, and then you're summing up over all the masses. So it has the exact same form as one dimension, okay? But this contains, okay, so this expression contains that one, that one, and the one for z. Okay, so that contains all three of them. It has the exact same form, but instead of an X, I have an R. Okay, now again, that's for point particles. Now, let's say I want to find the center of mass for maybe a disk or a sphere, okay, for a continuous mass di distribution. So here I have my X, Y, Z axis. I have some odd-shaped mass. Let's say here's the coordinate of the center of mass, and I want to find that location. There's my origin right there. Okay, so... We're just going to make the connection from the discrete world to the continuous world. So I'm going to go from this expression to that one. So instead of summing over the point masses, 
um, integrating over the entire mass of the object. Instead of r being the distance out to each point mass, like x1 to m1 and x2 is location of m2, so instead of r being the location out to each point mass, r is now the position out to the mass element dm. And then the, numer and the denominator, instead of summing over each individual masses, here I'm integrating over the entire mass of the object. So it has the exact same form as this, okay? But now instead of summing, I'm integrating, okay? And the units are the same. So you can see your mass units would drop out and you'd have units of location. Okay, now let, let's see, oops, let's see how we would use this. Let's see what this would look like for a picture like this. So I want to find the, the location or the position of the center of mass. Well, R, okay, R is the X coordinate I hat plus the Y coordinate J hat plus the Z coordinate K hat. So right here where I have R, I'm putting in that. In, integrating dm, okay, my numerator is dm, okay, and now I'm just going to multiply out this integral, okay, so I have x i hat dm, x i hat dm, divided by dm, and then I'd have y j hat dm, y j hat dm, divided by the integral of dm, okay, and then the same for z. So this part of it, okay, okay, that's the x chord in the center of mass. That's the y chord in the center of mass. That's the z chord in the center of mass. Okay. So the expression above, that one, okay, contains the x, the y, and the z. So let's see how we actually apply that. Okay. So I want to find the position of the center of mass for a thin homogeneous, homogeneous rod of length L and mass M. Okay, homogeneous means the same throughout. So it's, the, the density is, uh, is constant. Okay, so what I did is since this is one dimension, okay, so one dimension, right, I'm using this expression, okay, but in one dimension, I'm only using that part of it because I want to find the x chord in the center of mass. So I'm using this which is this whole term right there. So I rewrote this right that, right there. Okay, so let's figure out how you'd use this. Okay, so I need to integrate x dm. Well, the problem is, is the variable of integration is m, and the integrand is x, so I can't integrate that. I have, I have to change either the integrand or change the variable of integration. Okay, so here's how we do that. So here's the stick. Here's my x-axis. This is x equals 0. Okay, uh, mass of stick is M, length of stick is L. And so again, instead of, instead of going out to each point mass, multiplying it by the location, okay, X is the distance out to the mass element DM. So X is the distance out to the mass element DM. Okay, so here's how we change what, what we're integrating so, so that we can integrate that. So we introduce something called a linear mass density lambda. So lambda is mass per unit length, okay? Usually the word density is like a volume density, mass per volume. Lambda is a linear density, mass per unit length. So the linear density is mass m divided by length x. So I'll multiply both sides by x. So m is lambda x. So this is going to remind you what you did maybe about the first quarter of Calc 1. You're going to take a differential of both sides. So take a differential of both sides of that. Remember, okay, so... Uh, Lambda is your mass, your linear mass density. So I take a, a differential of both sides. I get dm is lambda dx. So here, where I have dm, I'm putting in lambda dx. In the numerator, I mean in the denominator, where I have dm, I'm putting in lambda dx. Okay, so I substitute it for dm and dm there, okay? And now I can figure out what are my limits. Well, the stick goes from L equals zero, whoops, not L equals zero. Stick goes from x equals zero to x equal L. So those are my limits from zero to L, okay? Now, to do this integral, lambda's constant, 
okay? Because it's a, a uniform density. It was given as uniform density. So lambda comes outside. I can cancel it. So essentially, I'm integrating x and then dx. So x integrates to x squared over 2. Okay, bottom looks like that. And I'm, and I'm evaluating this from the upper limit to the lower limit. So I put in the upper limit. Okay, just careful. So x squared over 2, l squared over 2. Okay, lower limit just gives me that. One of the L's cancel, and that tells me that the coordinate of the center of mass for the uniform stick is at the center, L over 2, right? And that's exactly what you expect, right? Now, another way we could have done this, instead of having the origin here, we could have put the origin, okay, at the center of the stick, okay? And then we would have done this expression, whoops, use this expression, okay, integrating x dm over integral dm, that's the x squared in the center of mass, but now if the length of the stick is l, okay, now I'm integrating, right, so x is the, x is the distance out to the mass element dm, okay, that part's the same, but now based on how I uh, drew my coordinate system, instead of integrating from 0 to L. Now I'm integrating where the stick is from minus L over 2 to L over 2. Okay, and I do the same here. The same thing as I did above. I said um, dm is lambda dx, same as above. So dm is lambda dx. So this looks the exact same. All that's different is my limits. Lambda comes outside. I'm integrating from minus L over 2 to L over 2. So the integral is the exact same. Okay, that's the same, that's the same. But now when you put in your limits, I put in that one, I get, what well, one half comes outside, and I get L squared over four minus L squared over four. So the numerator gives me zero, okay? The denominator doesn't. So that tells me the X coordinate of the middle of the stick, or the X coordinate of the stick is right at the middle at X equals zero. So those two agree. Okay. Now, Another way you can find an object center of mass, okay? Maybe you have some object with a weird shape. Okay, let's say two-dimensional, okay? And you want to find the um, coordinate or the location of the center of mass. You can actually hang it from a string, okay? And I'll show you a video um, that does that exact same thing. In this demonstration, we're going to see how to find the center of mass of an irregularly shaped object. For the object, we're going to use the state of North Carolina. So I'll begin by putting the pin here. This can be anywhere, but I'm just picking somewhere around Elizabeth City. I hold the end of the pin so that the map is suspended from my hand. So this means that the center of mass of the map will be somewhere along this vertical line. With a marker, I'll draw the line on there. Kind of a rough line, but you get the idea. So we know the center of mass falls somewhere on that line, but we don't know where. In order to find out, we need to draw a second line to intersect with the first. So to do that, I'll put the pin in somewhere else, somewhere up here around Boone. Suspend it once more. Draw another line. And that's enough to find the center of mass, which should be the intersection of those two. But just for good measure, we'll do it one more time to see if the third line also points, uh, passes through that point. So I'll put this somewhere down around Wilmington. And I don't have to draw the line for you to see that the string is passing very near that intersection point. So no matter where I put that pin, it should pass through that particular point. And let's see where that is. It turns out that it's very close to the city of Sanford. So if that really is the center of mass of North Carolina, then I should be able to balance the entire state on that particular point.
Now, when I said that Sanford was the center of mass of the state of North Carolina, I was talking about this cutout of the state. 